hello. Uh, <coughs> oh, my voice. Uh, we are going to see today seven tricks uh, for Rust Mapper for doing different GIS tools. Uh, so this is the list. Uh, we are gonna create and say shape files. We are gonna label them. We will also create profile lines that are another time of shape files. We will uh, calculate uh, very quick uh, slopes. Uh, we will see the we will see different configuration for terrain visualization. We will also plot contour lines and we will add web imagery. And those are tools that I use a lot. Uh, and even sometimes I do them. Um, I I'd rather do them in Rust Mapper than uh, QGIS or RMap or R Pro or Global Mapper or any others because they are very specialized for for uh, yeah um, river engineering. So let's let's start. Okay, so get out here. So the first one we are gonna see is how to create shape files and save them. If we are here in Rust Mapper, we will go to features where there is like a box where a lot of uh, shape files can be added. If we right click here, we can do two things. Either we create a new layer, a new shape file, or we can add an existing layer. But for this case, I will just go here and I will create a polygon layer. See, we could also add points, multipoint, polyline or flight path layer that we, we can see this other time. This is for the 3D viewer. That will be interesting. But in this case, we are just going to keep it simple and do a polygon, la polygon layer. We can leave the default name and I could go here and create a profile. Click, click, click and double click to finish. See here, automatically this uh, tool um, box appears and the first one that is the pencil writing is for adding new features. The second one is for edit features. So if I click here and I double click on the item that I just draw, I could modify it. I could also drag and click uh, suprimir, sup, uh, for uh, uh, deleting several uh, points at the same time. And uh, yeah, what else can we do? We could, Ah, we could even select this polygon and go here to tools. I could copy the feature and even paste it in a new one. So I could create a new layer, polygon layer, polygon layer one. And here I could just, I would just hide the old one. So we see clicking tools, paste features. So this is a way we can transfer polygons from a shape file to another one. And it can also be used in case, for example, that I have a shape file with my mining layer or my uh, curve number layer, and I want to bring it into the, um, into the layer where it should go inside the geometry. Okay, this is a way I could do it using this copy paste feature. There is an ambulance. Judge, you will hear that in the street, but life is like this. So what goes next? Ah, we could save them, going to right click, export layer, save to shapefile. We could even go to KML or, I don't know, there are filter polygon, spot polygons, raster by polygon. So these are just different tools, but the very useful ones, we could just save it to feature, go to the folder that we want, give it a name and save. Good. Something else we could do, we can have a look at, and we are moving to number two, that is create labels. I use this a lot in case I know where my upper stream boundary condition uh, should go and they have names. I would put the shape file and I will show the label. So in the attribute table, I can see my, uh, my, my features and I could even add a column that it's a uh, name and I can name it the uh, mm, test enter. So th this exists. And if I double click on the layer properties, I could label features with attribute columns. But you see just the zero shows up. I should go to edit and select the name in this case that I want to show. And of course here I could even go here and change color whatsoever. 
yeah, but this is it. How to create shape files, how to save them, how to label them. And then we move to number three, that it's a create a profile line. So this is a different type of shape file that Kekras has to plot results and to rate, or yeah, we can see it. So how we do this automatically, Hekras has these profile lines uh, input or output or layer. How are we gonna add them? I like to go from down here to profile lines, click on the um, click on the pencil, and we could add a profile here. Click, double click, profile line number three. Okay. Okay, and then it is important that the layers that I want to show in this profile are activated. So, if I want to show this terrain, then this terrain has to be activated. If I want to show this velocity, then this velocity has to be activated. And then I can go to profile line, plot profile, velocity. Hmm. I don't know why, ah, the terrain doesn't show up because for the velocity it doesn't make sense. But for the water surface elevation, we could plot the profile and water surface elevation. And here we could see both the water surface elevation and the terrain. And we are seeing more because I have activated two layers, so the one from the plan one and the plan two. So I can see here both, and this can be very useful to to compare results. We could even go to table and here I have the stations, the terrain values and the water surface values and I could just copy and bring them to Excel if I want to show them in a different way, Excel or anything you want. Yeah, so this is about profile lines. They are automatically saved in these um, profile lines and I could also export them in case I want to show them in a map or anything else. What else? What else? What else? Mm -hmm. This is the, well. Okay, so the next thing we are going to do is uh, calculate the slope. So here up on the top, there is this uh, tool called measure distance. Uh, so we click on it. And imagine, this, this is very useful to measure, of course. <laughs> I could click here and here, and automatically two things shows up. Line length, in this case uh, 141.5 meters, and the slope, minus 0 0.03. So if I want to have a quick check on any slope uh, or the length, I could go here. We could even copy coordinates to clipboard, or we could even plot terrain profile. So very nice to make uh, these quick profiles or look at the slope. Good, 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 good. And the next one is number five, that is terrain visualization. So this is the terrain that I have, and by default, it will appear like this. So I can see my terrain, you cannot see the... So you can see here that I have the terrain between minus 12 meters and 95 meters and if i if i zoom on it it doesn't change it, like the top gray one will be 95 meters and the smaller will be minus 12 but if i right click on the terrain no right click no if i double click here i can select update legend with the view and then automatically this values update so that I can see better what is higher and what is lower. Super useful because as I zoom, it changes. Very nice. And what else we could do? So we move to number six, that is create contour lines. Um, we can, we again double click here, and then we select plot contours. And the interval we can choose. So in this case, I'm just gonna leave it to a meter. We could even change the color of them, but no problem. So we could see here one meter contour lines, and this is really nice to have a quick perception. Or here, where I have like like a uh, void gap, uh, 
or high places or how they distribute uh, within the surface. Yeah, so visualizations of the terrain with, uh, with the colors and with the contour lines are really nice to have an overview of, of the terrain. So then we move to number seven, that is the web imagery. So I already had here Google Satellite. I like it a lot, for example, to check that I am in the right projection, that I am in the right place that I should be. And it's really important that uh, I have uh, my projection given. So here, if I go to Tools, Rush Mapper Option, Projection, we can see that we are in UTM, 32 North Zone. Uh, and then, so I will remove it just to show how to add it. Go to Map Layers, right click, Add Web Imagery, Google Satellite. And that shows up. And we could even probably play with the opacity and give it a, or not, oh, okay, was steady sometimes. So we could even see the terrain and the um, image, image or the photo at the same time. So this is it. Uh, we have had a quick overview at seven tricks for a uh, rust mapper. They are very useful and sometimes I, I even rather do them here than in QGIS or RMAP or RPRO or Global Mapper. Or, uh, yeah, they are really handy and I, I hope uh, it's useful for you. And if you have any comments, any suggestions, they are always welcome. And yeah, wish you a nice day. Bye bye.